Well, hey there, everybody. It's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be joining Altenew for their September 2019 release blog hop. I'm showing just a few of the stamp sets here, but the one I'm going to focus on today is this floral one here, and it is called Flower Garden. You can see it has some really nice big images, which are really great for coloring. And I'm going to be doing some watercoloring today and I'll get into that in just a minute. But first what I'm going to do is open the trifold pamphlet as I always do for my all to new videos. I do this every time because they're so gorgeous inside. It's got great uh, inspiration, some loose watercoloring and some embossing inspiration. But today we're going to go a little bit more in depth with it. And I'm going to be doing some no line watercoloring. It sounds really intimidating, but I wanted to show you how easy and simple it can be for you to dive into the no line watercoloring world. I am by no means an expert at no line watercoloring or watercoloring in general, but I have picked up a few tips along the way and I would love to share them with you. I've also gotten some questions from my online friends about how I do certain things with my no line watercoloring. So I thought it would be a good opportunity with this really beautiful set to show you how I do that. I'm using my mini Misty to stamp several images and I actually only end up using the largest rows and then a few of the leaves as well. The ink I'm going to use today is the fade out ink by ink on three and I'm using some Strathmore cold press watercolor paper. I'm making sure that I get a really nice impression by pushing down pretty hard because this fade out ink can be pretty tough to see and it does like it says fade out. So you want to make sure that you get a nice impression on there. So I would suggest double stamping if you can't see the lines uh, clearly the first time you stamp. I'm getting all of my supplies set up here and I'm using my Altenew watercolor pan set. I'm also using some clean water. I've got a paper towel here just to dab uh, some excess water off on and I'm using a number two uh, paintbrush. I have a number four by my side which it's you can't really see it right now um, but there were a few times in this where I thought maybe I should have used the four. Uh, the size two is just very thin obviously it doesn't hold as much pigment or water than a larger brush like a size four would but there are a lot of small details in these flowers that i wanted to make sure showed or was able to show through uh, so all in all i'm glad that i stuck with number two i think i could go up to number four for some of the larger petals but number two worked just fine so as you can see, how I started was just to take a dampened uh, brush and then put it into my watercolor pan. I'm going to take that full pigment and line the very base of that petal. I'll dip it in the clean water just a bit and then dab it off slightly onto the paper towel. And then I'm going to pull some of that pigment up and you can see that it's getting a little bit lighter. I'm gonna stop there dip my paintbrush back into my water, dab a little bit off, and then pull that pigment up a little bit more. Every time I do this, I get a lighter shade or less pigment and more water that I'm pulling up. And that's how you get that really fun and beautiful faded look that we all know and love from our favorite no line watercolorists. Um, so that is basically my secret. That's how I like to create that fade out look. Now, another really important thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to watercolor two petals that are touching when you're no line watercoloring. You want to wait until that petal is completely dry before you start watercoloring petals that are touching it. And this is for the simple reason that the pigments and the colors can run together and you want a clear divide between petals, which is hard to do, especially when you're no line watercoloring. You don't have that crutch of those dark lines to separate the or make the eye separate all of the petals. So what you want to do is actually make your darkest pigment when you're lining the base of it, that's going to be the differentiation between your petals. Now if I were to do the petal that was touching that wet one directly, my two colors would run in together and it would almost fuse those petals to the eye so it would make it look like it was just one petal and we wouldn't get very much differentiation there. 
I do the same thing throughout the entire rows. So I'm going to speed this up a bit and put some uh, music on so that you can see how it all comes together. I know it's hard to see right now, but it's really cool to see all of the elements start popping up when you're watching it. I will be back in just a minute so that I can show you how I add even a little bit more detail. So now that you've seen the rows come together, I'm going to show you how I add even a little bit more detail to these bends and this texture inside the rows. So obviously you can see that some of these petals are sort of flipping up on each other or on themselves, I guess. Um, so what I want to do is make sure that your eye catches that right away and that will give it a lot more depth and dimension as well. So I'm going to take the same paintbrush and add quite a bit of pigment with very little water because I want it to be a nice thin line and I'm just going to trace and drag out ever so slightly that pigment on the um, bottom side of that flip up just so that it looks like it's creating a shadow drawn onto the other petals. I love doing this step because I really think that it brings it all together. I think every step of this process is important and it's not a very quick process. It's something that takes a while, but I love the look at the end and it's so important to be able to take your time and just sort of let it all come together. And it's also really important to not quit in the middle because sometimes, especially no line watercoloring can look a little bizarre before you're finished. Um, but it, it ends up looking really beautiful if you just stick with it. And here is the finished product. I wanted to keep this card really simple to be sure that the rose was really the star. And I think that I achieved that here with this very dark gray card front and base. And then I used the fine frames die in white just to add a little frame there with the sentiment, hello there, I miss you. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about how I do my no line watercoloring. If you've got any questions, as always, please feel free to leave them in the comments and go into the description for the link to my blog post for the hop, as well as all of the products used today. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon.